The FCC has issued a notice of violation to a ham radio operator for allegedly transmitting one-way conversations. And that part I'm a little skeptical about. But let's read it and see what we what we see. But also, a denial of inspection. They knocked on his door. They said, we want to inspect your station. He said, no, you can't do that. And they did not come in. I made a video about a year ago about ham radio licensing versus the Fourth Amendment because one of the most common comments I get in videos about licensing is that you have to give up your Fourth Amendment rights when you get a ham radio license. That is completely false. And part of this article that I'm about to read to you proves that point, okay? And I have another couple thoughts about... GMRS licensing and CB radio licensing. You don't have to have a license for CB radio, but it is a what's called a common license. It is a usage license that says when, if you pick up the CB radio and transmit it on it, then you are agreeing to the license that adhere to CB radio rules. Same with FRS, same with MERS, same with uh, free radio services inside the USA. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But one of you guys sent me this article. This is on the ARRL website. I hadn't quite found it myself yet, but I got an email from one of you guys because I just did a similar article to this. So thank you for sending these to me. If you find other articles like this, please be sure to email them to me. So October 1st, a little bit over a week ago at the time of this recording, the FCC has issued a notice of violation, NOV, to Mike F. Conti of Naples, Florida. His call sign is KA2FPZ. You're going to like why he was he was fine. You're going to like this. So I want to know at the end of the video, are you guys in favor of this or not? Because I first read this and I'm like, okay, this is good that he denied them access to his residence. This is good because they did not barge in. They didn't take anything. They didn't violate his rights, at least not according to this article. But listen to what he was doing first. He is in Naples, Florida, citing alleged rule violations related to unauthorized transmissions and refusal to allow station inspection. FCC notice by the Regional Director, Region 1 Enforcement Bureau, was released on September 29th of 2025. That's this year. That's two weeks ago at the time of this recording. Less than that, actually. And includes that Conti holds an amateur radio service license, KA2FPZ. According to the notice, FCC Bureau agents from the New York field office conducted an investigation on March of this year so about six months ago, using directing finding techniques, and they located and monitored transmissions on 7,200 megahertz. <laughs> I read that, and my, my, uh, my, my thoughts on this story changed somewhat. 7,200 megahertz emanating from a residence owned by Conti in uh, Brookfield, Connecticut, that appeared to be one-way broadcasts originating from KA2FPZ. One-way broadcasts. Okay, so I'm wondering what that is. Uh, let's read on. According to the FCC, Conti was pretending to speak with a station he identified as KB2VBO, a call sign not currently assigned to any licensee. No station responded to the transmission, and the notice included that Conti later admitted to the agent that he was engaging in one-way communications that was neither allowed nor exempted under the rules. Now, okay, so here's, here's my thought on that. So he was calling a station or a call sign that does not exist. And he knew it didn't exist. So I guess that's a one-way transmission. When I think of a one-way transmission, what I think of is broadcasting like a radio station. Okay, like you key down, you read a news story, or you start just babbling about some kind of current event, current affair, current this, um, something that happened in the neighborhood, some kind of news article you read, something happened, talk about your favorite movie, TV show, blah, 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 like it's a radio station where you're just talking to people who can hear you and then you unkey and you don't engage in conversation to me that's a radio transmission we're not allowed to broadcast on amateur radio frequencies we transmit we transmit and then we receive and we transmit and then we receive it's two-way radio communications broadcasting is what am and fm radio stations you know commercial radio stations do uh your local am and fm radio stations your satellite radio through um um, Sirius XM 
is broadcasting because they are sending out a signal that you're receiving, but you can't reply to them. So it's a one-way radio transmission. So a broadcast is a transmission meant for one way where you're listening to it and they're broadcasting it. But we, as amateur radio operators and GMRS and CB radio operators too, we transmit, we don't broadcast, we transmit out and we receive in. So that's the difference. That's how it's defined. That's, that's the difference in defining. And to me, a one-way radio transmission... I always thought of it as broadcasting because if you just key down and act like you're on a pirate radio station, you know, Wolfman jacking it and whatnot, then you're that's illegal. That's illegal on amateur radio frequencies, okay. But I've never heard of this before happening to somebody for calling an allegedly fake call sign. But he admitted to it, according to this article, he admitted to it later. And I think we all know the type of transmissions that happen on 72 megahertz and if you don't go listen to it if you if you're if you find yourself bored one afternoon turn on your hf radio dial down to 7.200 megahertz and just listen for about a half hour let me know what you think about that in addition to the alleged unauthorized broadcasting the fcc reported that agents were denied access to the residents in violation of the commission's rules the notice of violation outlines two specific rule violations, okay? So these are, so, so a couple things about this, okay? I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. 47 uh, CFR, part 97.103, Charlie. The station licensee must make the station and the station records available for inspection upon request by an FCC representative. And part 97.113, Bravo. An amateur radio station shall not engage in any form of broadca broadcasting. I said that a minute ago, broadcasting. Nor may an amateur radio station transmit one-way communications except as specifically provided in these rules. So, okay. So he denied, he denied the FCC agents who knocked on his door access to his site. He would not let them inspect the radio station. Okay. So if you want to learn about this, you want to learn more about this, you want to learn deeper dive into these rules and regulations that we are required to adhere to, check out Ham Radio Prep. You can get your first license or your second or third license, and you can get courses about HF radio, Baofeng Basics, satellite communications, emergency communications, all from Ham Radio Prep. Go to hamradioprep.com, use the code of Jason20 to save a 20% discount off of all of their courses. This type of situation, this type of transmission, this type of rule violation for not letting FCC inspectors inspect your station equipment is included in those questions. Your very first test will go over some of that and it will explain it in more detail than what we're going to talk about, about today. So check out Ham Radio Prep. Use the coupon code of Jason20. And thank you, Ham Radio Prep, for sponsoring this series. Now, a couple of things about this, okay? Because people have commented in the past that if you get an amateur radio license, you have to give, give up your Fourth Amendment rights because you have to allow them into your home. You have to allow them into your home. No, you don't. Now, this is a two-edged two sword here, okay? This guy is being fined for allegedly broadcasting, and the FCC reported that the agents were denied access to the residents in violation of the commission's rules. So, you do, under your license terms, have to allow them to inspect the station, your station, if they come knocking on your door. That is part of the rules. And if you refuse to do that, if you deny them, they can't just burst into your door. They can't just say, nope, nope, we have the right to come into your property, kick down the door, take your stuff, violate your Fourth Amendment rights. They can't do that. As proven here, they did not do this to this gentleman. Okay? If they had kicked down his door basically stolen his equipment or put hands on his equipment or put hands on him after kicking down his door. Huge violation. Huge government overreach violation there. And I would go, and this guy might be one of these 7,200 jack wagons on 40 meters, but that doesn't mean I want his constitutional rights violated. Quite the opposite. I respect him for what he was doing. I respect him for saying, no, you cannot inspect my station equipment. Now, the reason he said that probably is because he might have had a 3,000-watt amplifier in there. Who knows? Okay, or maybe he just is pissed off at the FCC. I don't know. I'm speculating. Okay, I'm guessing. I don't know. But they did not burst into his house and violate his Fourth Amendment rights, according to this article. On top of that, if you have a GMRS license, then if you read through all of that paperwork that they made you sign online, you just go online, 
You fill out some paperwork, fill out your information, you click OK, you pay $35, and they issue you a call sign for GMRS. That's all there is to it. But there's about 35 pages of garbage that you agree to when you sign your name to it. This is in there. This is in there also. If you go and you read the license agreement, license agreement, when you buy a brand new CB radio or a brand new FRS radio, okay, there's a piece of paper in there that says if you use this radio on these frequencies, you are agreeing to this common license of not doing these things. And this part is in there also. If you key up a CB radio and they direction find you and find that you're running 2,000 watts on CB radios, you're, you're blatantly causing interference to someone else, some other radio transmission or whatever, okay, and they come knocking on your door and say, we want to inspect your CB radio station, you can say no. They can't come in, not legally. They can't come in, but they can come back with a warrant later and fine you, confiscate your equipment, especially if it's illegal equipment, and uh, issue a a writ or whatever it is, to you to say you are not allowed to use CB radio anymore. They can do that. So they can take away this guy's license. They can confiscate his equipment. Once they get a warrant, if he's smart, he'll get rid of all his equipment. If he has any illegal equipment, he'll get rid of it all before, they, before it comes to that. And then when they come back again with a warrant, he's like, okay, yeah, you can inspect it. And then he won't have anything nefarious or illegal in his, in his home. If that's what he has. Again, I'm speculating, okay? Whether he has illegal equipment or not is irrelevant for the, for the purpose of this argument I'm making. What I'm saying is he denied them access. They have to go away. They have to get a warrant through a judge now and come back later. And then with a warrant, just like getting a warrant to search a drug house or something, they can come in and inspect his equipment. Doesn't mean they can do anything else with anything else they see in the house. They can only inspect his radio equipment if the warrant is uh, typed up correctly. So, but again, that is something you agree to when you key up on a CB radio or an FRS radio or a MERS radio or a, a Marine Band radio, and it's something you actually sign your name to when you get a GMRS license. So this is not specific to ham radio, and it's not a uh, violation of the Fourth Amendment because you are not required to allow them into your home. Yes, you might lose your license. You might lose your equipment. You might get your equipment confiscated, but at least they're not going to enter your home without a warrant, which all of us can get can be subject to warrant searches if we're doing something wrong or if the authorities think we are. This last paragraph down here says, The commission ordered Conte to respond in writing within 20 days of the notice's release, providing a detailed explanation of the circumstances, corrective actions taken, and a timeline for addressing any remaining issues. The FCC emphasized that the notice does not preclude further action if warranted. So I read that as, you know, if he responds in writing in the time frame they requested and says... Sorry, I, I, got my, I got my buddy's call sign wrong or just, you know, makes up a story. I don't know. I don't know what his story would be. But if he responds in, in writing and he's cordial about it and he's polite and he kind of cooperates with them, they may not ever come back to, and request to inspect his equipment. Who knows? I don't know. That is part of the FCC rules if you are operating a radio inside of the United States. doesn't matter what the radio service is. Yes, it is a question on your first ham radio test but it is not only subject to ham radio. So I want to make, I've said that like three times now. I don't like repeating myself, so sorry about that, but I want to make that perfectly clear because these are comments that I get very often say, well, ham radio, you have to give up your Fourth Amendment. Well, no, you don't, number one. And number two, if you're operating a CB or an FRS radio or anything else, then you're agreeing to that by keying up that microphone on those frequencies. Whether you agree with that law or not, that is the current law in place in the United States. Now, I have heard about a, a lawsuit going on against the FCC for this for this being a rule at all. And I got to look that up. Somebody emailed me an article about that, so I need to look that up. If, if you have any information about that, send me an email to kc5hwb at gmail.com. Would like to. I know some people are talking about suing the FCC, saying you can't add this to the radio service. You can't say, oh, we have the right to inspect your station. They want them to remove that completely from all the radio services. And I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I would totally be on board with that and all radio services. So let me know what you guys think about this article. Let me know if you've listened to 7200 lately. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. Check out these videos over here because YouTube thinks you want to watch those next. We'll catch you next time.